and the battle is on. Campana up to the 25, cuts to the side to the 30, gets to the 43-yard line. Turn back to pass in the very first down of the ball game. Decides to run, finds the opening, gets to the 45, cuts outside the midfield, tries to angle to the sidelines, goes to the 30-yard line in Michigan territory. This game between the highly competitive rivalry stretch is known as the 10-year war. It's also the first time that these teams played on artificial turf. Show Rex Kern can do it all. That time the scramble, starting on the sprint out to his right, finding daylight back to his left and wisely getting out of bounds. Now immediate field position for the Buckeyes. And don't be surprised if Rex Kern decides to go to the air again. First and ten on the 31-yard line in Michigan territory. Hayden starts in motion. Kern pitches back to Otis. Gets a good block from Hayden and spun down to the ground on the 25-yard line. And to set the stage offensively for Ohio State, they'll be running mostly from a wing tee or an offense what Woody Hayes refers to as the old button-down shoe, the full house backfield with two tight ends. Second down and three yards to go. Ohio State threatening in the first minute of the ball game, and Jim Otis, Ohio drives his way to the 21-yard line. They're down about a foot and a half to go for a first down for Ohio State, first sequence after receiving the opening kickoff. And off to Otis. He hits Henry Hill, gets his first down, and gets inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. So the Buckeyes have their second first down of the ball game on the Michigan 19-yard line. The last time Ohio State trailed in a ball game was exactly one year ago in the Michigan game when Ron Johnson scored the first touchdown to give Michigan a 7-0 lead. However, the Buckeyes came back to score two. Michigan tied it up. Ohio State went on to win that one big, 50-14. to Right now they have the ball, first and 10 on the 19 of Michigan. And off to Otis. Big hole opens up. He gets seven quick yards before he's brought down at the Michigan 13-yard line by Marty Huff. Second down, four to go. Kern, keeping the ball, gets to the 11-yard line. Tom Curtis, number 25, making the stop for Michigan. Quarterback Rex Kern, fullback Jim Otis, and safety Jack Tatum of Ohio State all finished in the top 10 Heisman vote in 1969. He's back in the full house team. Kern, back to pass, is being rushed, throws it down the middle, he's got his man, it's Otis at the 12-yard line. That'll be short of a first down, and apparently no try for the three. The Buckeyes trying to go in for the first down, they have a fourth down and two. Kern gives to Otis, he bangs in hard, it's going to be very close, Henry Hill. Rock horns with him at the 10-yard line, and Michigan has stopped Ohio State. And the Wolverines take over the football at the 10-yard line, and what a roar. But, Ross, a beer's a beer. Give Billy one of them hams. You know I've roped a steer and had a beer. From here to the Rio Grande. But a beer is a beer is a beer is a beer Until you tasted hams Have another hams The beer born in the land of sky blue waters Where the flavor runs deep A beer is a beer is a beer is a beer I'll have me another hams Until you tasted hams First and ten for Michigan, the ball on the ten-yard line. Ohio State kept the ball for three minutes and forty seconds after taking the opening kickoff. And now quarterback Don Moorhead sets his team. Hands off to Billy Taylor. Gets about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Third down and five. Ball at the Michigan 15. There's no score. Hand off goes to Taylor, and he's hit hard. And down at the line of scrimmage he goes. Jim Stillwagon. Perfect snap to Werner. And an end-over-end end kick. Sails across midfield. And is taken on the fly at the 48. Zelina is missed. He goes to the 35. Slides through to the 32. Still on his feet. One man between him and the goal line. And it's Werner. He knocks him out of bounds at the 15-yard line. The man who punted the ball. Second down on 11. A loss of uh, a yard on the play. That's only the second time in his career that Otis has been thrown for a loss. Kern spots his man down the middle. It's Jan White at the 5-yard line. And it should be a first down. The Buckeyes had to go to the six for the first down. It's first and goal to go. Now it's second down and three on the three-yard line. Ohio State threatening Michigan's goal line. Hand off to Otis, and he's buckled at the two. The Buckeyes are down there threatening again. It's third and goal to go on the one. Otis, touchdown for Ohio State. 
Jim Otis scoring the 34th touchdown of his career, the 16th this year, and he puts the Buckeyes number one in the country in front, six to nothing. Ohio State had dreams of a second straight national title as they entered this game. They were on a 22-game winning streak and had 17 consecutive Big Ten wins. For him. Stan White back to try for the extra point for Ohio State. The score coming, 7.38 to go in the first quarter. Snap a little low. He gets it up, however, and it is no good. It is off to the right. And the deep men for Michigan, two speedsters, Billy Taylor and Glenn Dowdy. Both can run the 100 in about 9-7. It's a short kick, and Dowdy takes it at the 18. Breaks to the 30. Goes to the 35. And is pulled down at the 44-yard line. He almost broke away. Had it not been for Ted Provost, number 46, and Mike Sensabaugh, number three, he might have gone. We remember him from a game earlier in the year against the University of Washington. Doubt he had a big day that day. Michigan first-year head coach Bo Schembechler played for Ohio State head coach Woody Hayes at Miami of Ohio. And he also coached for him at Ohio State. Second and nine. Moorhead fires. He's got Oldham at the 47-yard line of Ohio State. First penetration by Michigan into Buckeye territory. Handoff goes to Billy Taylor, and he picks up the first down at the 43-yard line. Paul Schmidt, number 74, making the stop. Ohio State leads 6 to nothing. Pass complete to Mandich, the captain of the Michigan team, the tight end, and he struggles to try to get that extra yard at the 36-yard line. Mike Sensabaugh and Ted Provost bringing him down. Big Jim Mandich comes from Solon, Ohio. Second down and three. Man in motion is Gabler. Handoff goes to Craw, the fullback. And Craw gets to the 32-yard line before he's dropped by Paul Smidlin. And Jim Stillwagon, that's a first down for Michigan. In 1969, Ohio State's closest margin of victory was 27 points. No team scored more than 21 points against them, and they didn't score less than 34 points in any one game. Second down and eight. Moorhead fires down the middle. He's got Mandich. At the 21-yard line, first down. But Michigan has a first down and 10 on the 20-yard line. Take handoff, give it to Gabler. Gabler gets another first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. First and goal to go. The ball is on the 9-yard line. Michigan trails 6 to nothing. Keeping the ball is Moorhead. He gets down to the 3-yard line and worms his way to the 2. Second down. Handoff. Touchdown for Michigan. Bobby Crawford carrying it into the end zone for the touchdown. Frank Titus is back. It's good, and Ohio State trails Michigan now by the score of 7-6 to six with 3 minutes and 35 seconds to go. Second down and 7. Kern on a draw play, hands to Otis. Finds it a little bit tough going over the left guard spot. Gets up to about the 32-yard line before Marty Huff, number 70, brings him down. And number 39, Henry Hill. Rex Kern, number 10, the quarterback. Third down, four. Back to pass is Kern. Drills one down the middle. He's got it. A miraculous catch by Zelina at the 41-yard line. Second down and nine. Remember him well. Back is Kern. Throws a short one in the middle. He's got his man in a cross cut. It's Jan White. Going to the Michigan 40. And the stop made by Brian Healy, number 24. Kern hands off, breaking through as Otis. Ten quick yards off the right tackle spot and brought down by Barry Pearson. Ohio State six and here is Kern on a third and 14. He's got Jan White at the 15 yard line. Missed at the five, touchdown for Ohio State. So he's got Otis and Hayden in the three deep spot along with Zelina. Kern. Looks to the end zone, being rushed. Can't get it away. Tremendous rush by Mike Keller. Well, they've been very effective in shutting off some of the real fine running backs over the last two years. Last year, O.J. Simpson, Leroy Keyes, Ed Podolak, and Ron Johnson. And today they have a big assignment in Billy Taylor. Second down and eight. Here's Moorhead looking downfield, fires to the sideline. He's got his hand. Billy Harris catches the ball at the 44-yard line. It'll be enough for a first down. Here's Harris, junior from Mount Clemens, Michigan. Running the sideline pattern, and Don Moorhead on target for the fourth time. Moorhead four for four for 35 yards. First and 10, fake handoff. Moorhead ducks through the opening, and it closes quickly at the 48-yard line as Mark DeBevick, number 83, 
brought him down. And number 62 in there was Phil Strickland, the right linebacker. Moorhead having a little trouble with his shoe there as it came off. You'll notice they wear a soccer type shoe on this artificial turf. Mike Oldham, number 84, replacing Harris at split end for Michigan. He goes to the top of your screen. Michigan comes out with the eye in the backfield. Crawl the near man. Billy Taylor, the deep man. Handoff goes to Gabler. Gets to the 46-yard line. It may be enough for a first down as Mark Tebevic brought him down. The Wolverines' rushing attack excelled due in part to number 72 right tackle Dan Deerdorf's efforts. He was a second-team All-American in 1969 and a consensus first-team All-American in 1970. Drafted in the second round by the St. Louis Cardinals in 1971, he's a member of the NFL Hall of Fame. First down for Michigan. This is the 14th time since 1926 that the Big Ten Championship has hinged on this particular game between Michigan and Ohio State. And strangely, in the 13 previous games, Michigan has won the conference championship six times. Ohio State has won at six, and one game was a tie, a memorable one. It was, too, just exactly 20 years ago today in 1949, and Michigan and Ohio State tied 7-7. Seven seven. First and ten. Taylor the deep man to the short side of the field and is down on the 42. Second down and seven. The ball on the 42-yard line. Mike Oldham has replaced Harris. He is split out. Moorhead looks down and throws. He's got Mandich at the 33. Bowls around. Tries to come back and they close quickly. What a defensive secondary as Jack Tatum buttoned him down to the ground and Mandich was hurt on the play. Jim Mandich is okay. The team captain is all right, it's first and 10, and the handoff goes to Billy Taylor, finds an opening, goes to the 25, rides off tacklers, goes to the 20-yard line, down the sideline to the 13 or 10. He's out of bounds on the seven-yard line and maybe closer to the five. Well, just as we pointed out in the pregame show, Bill, that great leg drive and what acceleration, determination. He did want that end zone. And here he is, the man that's made a big difference for Michigan, Billy Taylor, the tailback, number 42, off tackle. Loses one tackler, another, and another. Still fighting, nearly going the distance. The ball is placed in the six-yard line after that 27-yard scamper by Billy Taylor. First and goal to go. The handoff goes to Craw. He's close to the goal line, but he's not in. And the full house team. Moore had the quarterback, number 27, calling for quiet. Somersaults into the end zone. It's a touchdown for Michigan, and the Wolverines take the lead 13 to 12. And back to try for the point is Frank Titus. It's up. It sails into the end of the crowd, and it's good. And Bill, an interesting statistic. That's the tenth time Garvey Craw has scored a touchdown from one yard out. He's got a total of 13, but 10 of them have been one yarders. Ohio State was favored by two touchdowns coming into today's game. But the report in Ann Arbor is that they have never had spirited practices like the ones this week. First and 10 on the 25. Rex Kern hands off. Leo Hayden is hit hard by Marty Huff, number 70, and Henry Hill, number 39. Rex Kern back to pass from the 18-yard line. Fakes the short one, throws deep. He's got Campana. He caught it out of bounds. Third down and eight for the Buckeyes. They're trailing 14 to 12. Kern fakes short, tries to pull long. Now still looks. He's got Jankowski deep and throws to the sideline incomplete. Mike Senzabaugh is deep. Harrison and Curtis back for Michigan. High wobbly, hard to handle kick, but it's taken on the fly by Barry Pearson. Barry Pearson gets to the 50, goes to the 40. He may break this one. He's got a man blocking for him, cuts to the 10, and is down on the four-yard line. What a run by Barry Pearson of Michigan, a senior from St. Ignace. It's on the three-yard line. 61 yards. In motion is Dowdy. Kept the ball is Moorhead, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Don Moorhead, the quarterback, on the keeper. Gives Michigan its 20th point in the afternoon. What a surge by that Michigan offensive line to set it up for Moorhead. It's perfect. Ohio 
State now trails 21 to 12 against an inspired Michigan team. First and 10 for Ohio State trailing 21 to 12. Kern is hit hard. Back on the 28 yard line by Henry Hill and number 80, number 90, Mike Keller. Nine minutes, 41 seconds to go in the first half from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Michigan leading Ohio State 21 to 12. Second down and 13. Kern tries to throw, gets out of the pocket. He's missed by Hill, comes to the 35, he is hit from behind and pulled out of the 42 yard line, a yard short of a first down. Here's Kern getting the first down, and he's down on the 47-yard line. Eight and a half minutes to go. First half, Michigan leads 21 to 12. Handoff, bursting through is Otis. Out of bounds on the 27-yard line, and he's thrown out by Tom Curtis. Here it is, the off tackle. Otis finding the hole, seeing daylight to his outside, cutting there, and going here for the extra yardage. Second and eight. Kern trapped back on the 36-yard line. Pete Newell, number 82, was the man who wouldn't give up, and number 97 was Ed Moore. Third and 19. Kern looks, throws a lob down the center, and it's incomplete. Intended for Dick Kuhn, number 81. Try for the field goal by Stan White from the 43. It'll be 53-yard attempt. He's only made one out of five, and the ball goes down into the end zone and out of the field of play. And it is third down and two. Moorhead keeps, finds an opening. Hit from behind, but he has a first down, and Dave Whitfield just may have saved the touchdown there because nobody in the secondary was in front of Moorhead. He was tackled from behind. Don Moorhead played with the Canadian Football League's British Columbia Lions from 1971 through 1975. He threw for 8,689 yards, 42 touchdowns, and 58 interceptions while rushing for 1,212 yards and 8 rushing touchdowns. Moorhead hands off to Taylor, tries to squeeze through the right tackle spot and fights his way to the 44-yard line. First and 10 on the 47. Takes, Moorhead keeps, cuts the corner, goes to the 41-yard line. First and 10, the ball on the 35-yard line. Oldham is split out to the right. Taylor cocks over in the backfield, and Gabriel is in motion. Moorhead hit by Stillwagon. Ooh. As he turned the corner, Jim Stillwagon, junior middle guard from Mount Vernon, Ohio. Uh, notice how he takes this blow. See that lateral movement of Stillwagon? And there's Tatum right behind, number 32. We didn't even see him. This could be one of the real key downs in this ball game. It's third down and eight with two minutes and 47 seconds to go in the first half. Michigan wanted to keep this drive alive, not to give Ohio State the ball. Moorhead on a good fake. Rolls comes out, got Mandich at the 20, goes to the 10, and he's inside the 10-yard line at about the eight. First and goal to go on the eight-yard line. Handoff to Croft, fake handoff, beautiful fake. Second and four, 153 to go in the first half. Michigan leads 21 to 12 and threatening again. Handoff goes to Darby Craw, the fullback. Sends the ball, bringing him down. Darby Craw has started 25 straight ball games for Michigan. Ever since the middle of his sophomore year. Seldom has there been a more brilliant defensive team than Ohio State. All 11 started the season. They started today's game. They're in there right now. And they're really being called on as Moorhead is stopped by Smidler, number 74. The Buckeyes going to their hurry up or two minute offense with no huddle. Kern looks to the sideline. Rifles one. It is almost intercepted. Tom Darden, the Wolfman, number 35, almost had that football. There's daylight up front. Second down and 10. Back live now. Down the middle is the pass. It's intercepted by Michigan. Number 25, Tom Curtis, who leads in Big Ten interceptions, takes the ball and goes out of bounds at the 32-yard line. First and 10. A long, deep one. Down deep is Harris. Out of the way on a brilliant defensive play by Ted Provo. 41 seconds to go in the first half. It's second down and 12, and the Wolverines would like very much to get up there once more. Oldham down deep, and the pass is intercepted. Sends the ball, has it, for Ohio State, and he's snagged at the 40-yard line. But not wanting the big one, with four seconds to go, and Michigan leading by 12 points. 
Byrne throws a deep one down the middle. It sails very deep. It's intercepted by Michigan. And that is the end of the first half. The field today. And what an athlete this guy is. He has sprinter speed. He's over 200 pounds. He blitzes the quarterback. Uh, he covers passes. He shuts off the run. And just for example, watch him here. Well, Jack, in this day and age of offensive football, it's very rare to find somebody who just revels in playing defense like you do. You really love it out there, don't you? Right. I love to play defense since I was in high school. <laughs> Did you play both ways? I played fullback and middle linebacker. Well, you know, on defense itself, are you given any latitude by Coach uh, McCullough or Coach Hayes as to what to do and where to go on any particular play? Well, on the, depends on where they line up. I can line up mostly depending on where I want to. But, like, I have certain specific areas to cover, so I been told what to do well sometimes you're you're rushing through other times you're actually playing as a pass defender and uh, it, it must it must involve uh, maybe as much running as an offensive back during a game yeah I think so most of us backwards it's, it's <laughs> kind of tired the words of Jack Tatum All-America cornerback for the Ohio State Buckeyes first and ten the ball number 42 in Michigan territory Oldham is in as the split end number 84 handoff goes to Taylor Grimes through, gets almost up to midfield. In fact, he is on the midfield strike before Ted Provost brings him down. Billy Taylor, sophomore from Barberton, Ohio. First and ten. The ball is on the 47-yard line of Ohio State. Fake handoff. Forehead. Close. He's got a man. It is handed at the 34-yard line. And did you see Oldham? Oldham was yes, absolutely in the open at the 15-yard line and behind everybody. Tim Killian, who kicked one from the 25, is back there now. From the 37, it'll be a 47-yard attempt. It is a short kick, a wobbly one, and coming down and bouncing. And the ball is recovered oh. by number 59, down on the one-yard line. Serratos down that ball on the two-yard line. This is where Ohio State will take over. For some reason, Ohio State did not decide to field it. And that could be a big break. For Two, I think. In fact, got them both. Blasting out to about the 17-yard line is Jim Otis. He has a career total of nearly 2,400 yards coming into today's game, needing only 68 to tie the all-time offensive record by Cassidy, and he may be very close to that now. Hayden starts in motion, shuttling across his turn, takes the handoff, ducks inside. Breaks into the open and is pulled down by Mike Keller, who had to make a leap over one man to get to him, and Kern was shaken up. Kern has had two major operations, one a spinal fusion, and the other one in March of this year for a shoulder separation. It's a third and three situation on the 44-yard line of Ohio State. Kern, on a little twist, goes to midfield. First down for the Buckeyes. Third down and four. And with third and four, I think we can look for the option play or the sprint out pass by Rex Kern. Ball of the 44 of Michigan. Kern looking, has good protection, throws the sideliner. It is incomplete, intended for Larry Zelina. And he falls right on the Ohio State pom-poms on the far side of the field. Mike Oldham in for Bill Harris at end. Hand off, fake, Moorhead throws. At the 29-yard line, making a marvelous catch right between Jack Tatum and another defender as we come down to the final five minutes of the third quarter. Michigan leads 24 to 12. Fake handoff. Moorhead tries to cut through, gets an opening. He's short of a first down on a fine stop by Paul Smith in number 74. First and 10, the ball on the 22-yard line, Ohio State in possession. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Leo Hayden is hit hard. Number 22, running back Leo Hayden, was the first round draft pick of the Vikings in 1971. He was supposed to help a weak rushing attack that averaged only 3.2 yards per carry in 1970. However, Hayden didn't carry the ball once in 1971, despite playing in seven games. He couldn't cut it with the Vikings and played for the Cardinals in 1972 and 1973, rushing eight times for 11 yards and one touchdown. Oh, he did have one additional reception for 17 yards, but that was it for his pro career. Kern looks, 
Throws a high pass. He was hit. As he threw it, it's intercepted by Michigan. Pearson getting the ball on the 27-yard line. Barry Pearson, who earlier today ran back a pump for 61 yards, gives Michigan the ball on the 26-yard line. Forehead. Rifles one. Incomplete. Thrown too low for Oldham. Trying a field goal from the 33, a 43-yard attempt against the win. He kicks it. It's going to be short. And it goes out of the field of play. Ohio State, first and 10 on its own 20. Right through the middle goes Jim Otis. Comes up to the 38, 39-yard line. 19 quick yards by this great fullback of Ohio State. Third down nine, the ball on the 40. Two minutes, seven seconds to go in the third quarter. Michigan hoping to pull the startling upset of all time here. Leading 24 to 12. Turn a long one down the middle. It is intercepted by Michigan's Barry Pearson. He comes back to the 30, to the 35. Tries to pick up blockers, goes to midfield. To the 40, and he is knocked down on the 35-yard line. He must have run 75 yards with that ball, most of them laterally, because of total downfield yardage was 41. Michigan is calling some audibles. Here's Moorhead throwing one deep. He's got a man deep, and it's incomplete. Pulaski almost had the interception on the 29. It'll be a 39-yard attempt with 41 seconds to go in this third quarter. It is up, and it is just short. Second and one. Ooh, pushing tackle put on Otis. Ohio State has the ball. Third down and one. On their own 29-yard line. The Buckeyes trying for the first down. And it's Jim Otis who gets the first down. Third and four. Kern Shuttling gives the ball to Otis. Bounces off tacklers and goes to the 42. Fumble the ball. But I believe the whistle is blown. Fourth down, a yard and a half. Kern is stopped. He does not make it. Pete Newell, number 82, came through from his defensive right tackle spot, and Michigan takes over the football. Third and six. Moorhead looks. Goes to Harris. Too high, over his head. It brings up a fourth down. Moorhead gets outside. He throws it complete. He's ridden out of bounds inside the 20 by Mike Pulaski. It's a first down by a yard. This has been a long and colorful series. Seldom in the history of football, however, has a game meant so much to either team, and seldom has there been a more stunning result to this point. Michigan has 206 yards rushing. Ohio State isn't very far behind. 199. The important thing is Michigan leading 24 to 12, third and four. Taylor shrugs off a tackler and goes ahead to about the 11-yard line. Long count. Oh. Just got his nose on the 10. Not enough. Ohio State takes over the football. Leo Hayden coming into the lineup for 22 with a third and six. The ball is on the 14-yard line. Rex Kern. Trying to get it away. Henry Hill knocks him down on the line of scrimmage. Ohio State trailing. Michigan with a third and four. Forehead keeps. Makes about three, maybe three and a half before Nick Roman brings him down. Fourth and one for Michigan. And Michigan did not get it. And Stillwagon again comes up with a great stop for the Buckeyes of Ohio State, and they take over the football. First and 10, 6.55 to go. Handoff goes to Otis. However, Marty Huff bear hugs him at the 23-yard line and rides him to the ground at the 25. Ron Masajowski, number 18. Otis has been a real worker today, 28 carries. Masajowski throws, it is incomplete. Quarterback Rex Kern was pulled from this game after only completing 6 of 17 passes for 88 yards, along with three costly interceptions. 6.34 to go in the ballgame. Third down and eight. Big play for the Bucks. Masajowski from his own 16 finds an opening. 
decides to run, breaks into the open at the 35 and is cut down on the 37, but it is a first down and keeps the life alive for the Buckeyes. Mesajowski looking. Hayden's in the middle. He rifles one. It is intercepted by Pearson, oh. Michigan. A fantastic interception by Barry Pearson. Gets his second one of the afternoon. The fourth inter That's the third one he's gotten. Right. The fourth interception in all. And Michigan takes over the football on the 47-yard line. Michigan leads 24 to 12. On the verge of what we might call the upset of the century. Moorhead doesn't want to go out of bounds, so takes a licking inside. Michigan, first and ten on the 39-yard line, and Dowdy gets the ball again, ducks outside, goes to the 27, to the 25-yard line. 3.23 to go. Michigan leading 24 to 12. Ball is incomplete. It hit the chest of Mike Sensiball. Here is an attempt for a 46-yard field goal by Tim Killian on fourth down and 12. He has the window is back this time. But it is going to be short. Third down and 10 on the 20. Mesajowski fakes short and throws a long one. He's got Coon out there and he misses the ball. Ohio State has not crossed midfield during the entire second half of this game. Well, they wanted to go out with a big victory and it looks like they may have gotten it with a fourth and 10, a fake punt. Sends the ball, throws, complete to Zelina, and he's knocked out of bounds on the 38-yard line. And Michigan leads 24 to 12. We have 2.51 to go in the ball game. Mesajowski back, has plenty of time. Now throws it to Otis. Otis is hit by Henry Hill, shrugs him off. Marty Huff grabs him and upends him at the 46-yard line. Mesajowski back. Rifles one down the middle. It's caught by Dick Kuhn at the 32-yard line in Michigan territory. First and 10, the ball to the 32-yard line. The Buckeyes trying desperately here in the last two minutes of play. Mesajowski is pounced on by Cecil Pryor and Pete Newell. Ohio State trailing by 12. Mesajowski back. Goes down the middle. It is caught, and I don't know how, by Ray Gillian, who was flat on his back. Ball is on the 22-yard line. Mesajowski passes. It's intercepted by Michigan's Darden, and he's pulled down from behind on the 33-yard line. That exactly was the halftime score, and it's been a score in the second half. What a duel. Mysajowski back. Heads for the sidelines. Doesn't go out of bounds. Fumbles the ball. It's picked up by Michigan at the 31-yard line. And there it is. What has to be the upset of the century. Ohio State was favored to win by 17 points. A lot of people think this was the greatest upset in college football history. How about you? We talked about the emotional impact of this thing. I have never seen a football team so emotionally up for a game as Michigan was today. 